Hi, I'm Tika Hessing and uh, I'm a human geographer, so creating workplace strategies for organizations. And I've got a question for Mike. So um, Atlassian, they revealed the new plans for your headquarters um, in Sydney. It's part of the tech precinct at Central Station. What is the role of a, it's a 40 story building, so it, it's quite large. So I was wondering, what is the role of a big development like that when employees can choose to work from home permanently? Your employees could go and live in Darren's electorate in Gippsland. They could move to Adelaide where Mark Butler is, probably have a much nicer life. Why on earth are you building a 40 story skyscraper? Oh, that's a good question. Thanks for the question, Tika. Um, we do have employees that live in, in both Adelaide and in Gippsland. So, um, look, we... we um, firstly, I think the, the office has an incredibly important role to play in bringing people together to collaborate, and, and we'll continue to do so. Um, in normal times, it's quite easy to travel to Adelaide or to Gippsland and back to Sydney uh, for meetings. That doesn't mean you need to turn up to that office every single day if you don't choose to. So all we're saying at Atlassian in terms of uh, our employee choices, for some people, it is the best place to go to work and do it in an office. For other people, it may be the best choice to stay at home five days a week or two days a week or three days a week. We want to give um, individual um, choice at how they work best, how they perform you know, their best job, uh, and uh, also manage the team collaboration. So we need to have still amazing spaces around the world where they can come together to collaborate. It doesn't mean they need to show up to that office every single day. Uh, and it may be different for different people. So it's like a very expensive drop-in centre. Is that, is that what the office becomes? Uh, yeah, more or less, with some fantastic collaboration <laughs> facilities. Um, but there's there's lots of potential. Um, you and I know you've elected to go back into the office more now that you can. Why? Well, a few reasons. One, uh, in Canberra, it's very cold, and <laughs> office has heating, and uh, <laughs> so I don't have to pay for heating at home. <laughs> And two, there's a standing desk there. Um, I don't have a standing desk at home. And also I have a cat that likes to jump on me and be in front of cameras when I'm in meetings. It makes for much more entertaining <laughs> Zoom calls, to be honest, <laughs> when the pets appear. Marion, do you, do you, can you imagine uh, the shape of work differently now? I mean, you've been an investigative journalist for a long time. I imagine the last thing you'd ever want to do would be to be in an office space. No, actually, I liked the office space a lot. Doing the book, uh, which <clears throat> took me far too long, I was working a lot at home on my own and I did miss that collaboration. I mean, you know, people call it the water cooler effect, whatever, but it's the fact that you can swap ideas. And I suppose one of the things I wonder is that if we really do post-COVID, uh, stick to a lot of people uh, working from home and not going into the office, particularly women choosing more not to go into the office, will they lose uh, that spark and that spirit of collaboration that you do get from the interpersonal interactions? Anyway. Does it change people, Mark Butler, their views of moving to places like Adelaide that previously might have been more difficult if you, if you had a big corporate job in Sydney or, or Melbourne to make that choice to perhaps take your family back to where you grew up? Do you think this is a game changer for, for a city like Adelaide? Well, I hope so. I hope people feel that they can leave the rat race in Sydney and Melbourne and, and come home to Adelaide and, and um, live a beautiful lifestyle here. But I think... I've got to let you know, some people in the studio audience here are laughing at this, but <laughs> I'd, lo I'd love to be in Adelaide. Come on down, Hamish. <laughs> um, I, I, th I think more broadly, though, there's a lot of people I'm talking to here in Adelaide who were sent to work from home at the height of the pandemic here and are struggling to get back. And, and a lot of them are finding it quite dislocating, quite distressing having to work from home. It, it's blurring the boundary between your work life and your personal life. A lot of the costs, as you was implying there, a lot of the costs about electricity and furniture and such like seem now to have been shifted from employers to employees without much of a debate at all. So I think if this pandemic does lead to a more structural shift about the nature and the place of work, I hope that follows a dialogue between employers and employees involving trade unions and such like, rather than just pe be people being left in the situation they found themselves in at the height of the pandemic. Because a lot of people in my community are talking to me in Adelaide about really being quite, um, quite dislocated, still working from home. They want to get back to the office, many of them. 
Uh, Darren Chester, there's obviously lots of stories about all the celebs, the international celebrities descending on places like Byron Bay, the Nicole Kidmans, the Zac Efron's. Are you sort of waiting for it all to happen in Malakuta next? Oh, we, we got in early, actually, uh, Hamish. It's a little-known fact that Slim Dusty spent a lot of his time in Meetung as a young man <laughs> yeah. when he was touring. So that's going back a long time. That's before my time and your time. Uh, look, I think Mark's right, though. There's, it's not going to be the same for everyone. Uh, some people do well at home and are going to want to stay at home and have that uh, flexibility of arrangements. Uh, but for others, it, they will prefer to be back in the workplace. I think it will give us an opportunity, and that choice will give us an opportunity for more people to look at uh, regional locations. Uh, if you've got good connectivity, so you're going to need good road, rail, airport connectivity, but obviously good NBN connectivity as well to make sure uh, people who make that choice can work from home. So I think it will probably help us in, in Gippsland. We might see more people uh, making the choice to live a little bit further out and taking advantage of one of these lifestyle opportunities, but also um, greater affordability in terms of homes and that type of thing.